Okay, we fired up the machine. It's um, I just hung up the camera just now, and um, my wife said she's about to come put this other path on this one. Uh, I thought it might be interesting for you to see how it moves from the flat into the fourth axis. Okay, I better stop touching this stuff before I get in trouble for my wife. I'd like to make it known at this point in time that uh, my wife, who has breasts, is actually able to. Um, <coughs> ow, 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 I've got one in the ribs there. Uh, she is actually able to utilize um, technical equipment. So, um, this sexist, racist bastard uh, relies on his wife. Quite a bit. I might move around and to the other side because I know that you need this. So basically there was that index point we were talking about earlier. Uh, so what Corey's doing now is she's just going to line up the tip of the cutter to the tip of that. And she's using a jeweler's loop. Rests in a jeweler's loop. Oh my god. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'll probably cop another item online for that. So really what she's doing now in the X, she's lining that up. And then she'll also do it in A. Um, and once those two points are looking at each other, everything's good to go uh, that's very manual you say yes it is and even people with automated mills they like to run a little check like this too because the problem with anything uh, if sorry it's, I have to no 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 that's fine see. anything with um, boobs or wheels will give you trouble and mechanical stuff has a way of losing steps or getting backlash or all kinds of problems that crop up and and so if you rely on an entirely, can I, can I come around and have a look yes. at If you rely on something that's entirely mechanical to get a high precision result for you, um, you can find that it come back and bite you in the arse because automated systems, oh, well that's exactly what they are, they're automated. So they don't allow you to error correct. This way, it's just a quick, you saw it took under two minutes, just a quick way for us to verify that this is actually 100% spot on. And then basically what's going to happen is Corey's just going to cut. She's loaded the path already, I assume. No, she's busy loading the path. Uh, so she's loading the road path. She'll just turn on the viewport to verify that it is the right path. No, I won't. No, you won't. Okay, all right, well, you see. I've written down what it is, so I don't think. Okay. And... All that's going to happen now is we're going to cut it. Now my particular I think use Rhino Cam for this. So Rhino Cam um, starts cutting from minus 180 and then works back around. Oh, where are we? Going really fast. So what that's going to do is going to work its way, and it's going to cut away all the inside areas that weren't accessed before. Okay, hope that's useful to someone. That's going to take what about 45 minutes. Right, how much was the flip? An hour, hour and a half. About an hour and a half. So an hour and a half, for, so about two hours, ten minutes, two hours, fifteen minutes to cut this ring in its entirety. Um, and about, I don't know, how long was the video? Twenty minutes to draw. So, of course, the beauty of CNC is that those two hours, twenty-five minutes, are absorbed by a machine that's running on its own. So at this point, so, cheers, muchachos. See you later, Maling machine. Oh, I love that girl. I like the other one too, she's not bad either, but, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop at this point before getting shit. Cheers, Chris out. Wow, live and learn. Such a rush to draw this ring that um, I drew it with an under rail, and I only realized after the fact that it doesn't actually have an under rail. <laughs> so, luckily it was picked up while it was in wax and before it was committed to platinum. Um, so that will now be cast in platinum. So that was a recut. Um, so yeah, 
happens to us as well, folks. I think it happens to everybody once in a while. Let's see if I can grab you a little bit of really close detail on that. I think you can probably tell there's a very, very distinct difference between. Let's see if I can get that closer. Whoa, just out of focus there. It's a very, very distinct difference between uh, a milled wax and a, and a printed one. So this wax, you can probably, I'm going to see if I can find you some compaction. Mm, there's something in there. Oops, come on, get focused. Get focused. Is there any compaction? Anyway, this was cut with a 10 degree tapered ball end. There we go, there's some compaction in there. And hasn't been worked on at all. Um, no post, no post processes, cleaning or anything. Literally cut and chucked in the ultra. Right. Um, I'm going to separate that bastard off. So you want the job done right? Buy yourself a mill. Cheers, Chris out. Okay, so there were some queries about um, about that full circle wetter. Um, I have to try and do this with one hand. Hang on a ticket. Um, oh, go on. So this is the raw casting back in from from Apex. Uh, try and I'm gonna try and zoom that as close as I can for you without the bloody thing losing focus. And as you can tell, that is the difference between a milled casting and a grown one. All right, there's virtually no work off on there, especially considering this is platinum. I'm going to cut off the three sprue points that were in between and um, stick it on the platinum mop and I'm ready to go. And by the way, I'm going to set this thing on the, on the ring compressor. It takes about 10 minutes to set all those stones, all perfectly even too. Alright, so I'm going to add up a bit of this video when it's done. And then at least there's a full from two on the making of this ring. Okay. Cheers, Chris out. So basically, what I do is obviously you use two hands doing this, but I have uh, the platinum polish on a brush. I use that to knock off between the prongs. Uh, obviously, using a considerable more force than that. to set that fella. That's come off the buff now. And all I've done is I've pushed that um, hard burr in there. The hard burr is 3.6 mil. My stones are 3.5 and what I do is I just push it in so that the bearer goes just under. Chim, chim, chim. Couple of quick cuts. Let's see if I can catch that for you. I don't think it's going to zoom in that well. Anyway, and I'll show you the setting in a tick. One sec. Oops, I forgot to mention that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat up the wax and drop some wax in there just to hold all the stones and we'll show you from there. Cheers. Yeah, so what's happened is oh, I've just nicked all those stones in. Um, there's wax in there holding them in place. I'm going to stick them in, pick it up carefully so they don't drop out. i just got to find the right size hole for it. No, nope. it. Oops, right there. No, nope, that one. Now I'm not able to do this on camera because I need two hands, I need to listen to it. Hang on a tick. Okay, so, a little bit on from that, oopsie daisy, a little bit on from that, you have the completed article. All set up. And really not that hard to do. focus on that. Right, so I hope someone was able to learn something a little useful out of that. Pull it down there, see if I can get a bit of focus for you to come. So that 
that's pretty much that.